Hello, Emmanuel Church family. Uh, so happy that you all can uh, join in with us today. Um, we are here for the second episode of Word of the Week. Um, we're we're trying our best to uh, stay connected with you guys. Uh, we know this is a really weird time uh, with this continued um, quarantining and all the different things going on with COVID nineteen. But uh, we are here. We we wanted to use what resources we had to try and stay connected with you guys. So I just want to let you know that uh, your pastors love you. We miss you terribly. Uh, it has been so strange not being able to gather with everyone, not be able to see each other for a while. Um, we talk about it all the time. But uh, we, we've we been putting this together uh, our second week now, um, putting this show together uh, just to discuss some different things, give you some encouragement uh, midway through your week. And so that's exactly what we are going to try and do today. Um, so today we're talking about the book of Job, um, the Old Testament book of Job. Uh, Pastor Blake uh, was able to um, preach on the, from the book of Job this past Sunday. I would encourage you, if you missed that, to go onto our Facebook page and look for the most recent uh, upload, uh, the most recent video. And it should be his sermon. Um Surprisingly, he he attempted to go through the entire book of Job. <laughs> uh, we've laughed about that a bit, um, but he he literally went through how many chapters are there? Forty two. Yeah. So he he did a, a quick summary of uh, of forty two chapters, which was which was pretty impressive. Um, but we we learned a lot from uh, Job. It's it's definitely an an interesting book. So we're just going to uh, spend some time. We are going to mention his sermon some and maybe do a forecast of the sermon that is uh, hopefully coming this Sunday. Um, but we're going to spend a lot, most of our time just discussing Job. So we really want you uh, you guys to listen in on this and to uh, think about this uh, this amazing book. So uh, first off, Blake, give us some uh, background on the book of Job, and I'll chime in as, um, as we mention things that, that I'm passionate about. But give us a little bit of back, background on the book. Yeah, so... Uh, The book of Job, of course, chronologically is nestled almost right in right in the middle of the scriptures. It's right before Psalms, but it is actually the oldest uh, literature that we have. It is it is nestled in there as far as um, the books of wisdom, Mm -hmm. Job, Psalms and Proverbs. When you say old, you mean like some of our oldest manuscripts in the world. Yes, Job, yes. Right? discovered and um, discovered. Yeah. Not necessarily meaning that it was written first. I yeah. think there's some evidence inside of it. We may get to that today or maybe next week. As far as some small evidence is that it is it was written later. There's some um, references to um, the uh, descendants of Esau and yeah. so forth. So that's that's in there. So we know that it was written prior to some. But as far as discovery goes, it is the oldest book in the Old Testament. And so um, we do not know who the author is. Mm. And uh, but it is isn't there some speculation? There's some people there's say some, Moses, Moses, some, some and uh, but not really enough to where people you know give a name to it. Um, it's it's probably very much like Hebrews, mm. where many suspect Paul to be the writer, but not enough to get make it a Pauline epistle. Yeah. You know, and so um and so we do that the same with with Job. It's a book of poetry. Mm-hmm. And it it's is, one giant poem, right? It is. It's just one man. It, it's, it's crazy just, to think about. It's so packed, forty-two chapters, and so I'm I'm very thankful for it, and I've fallen in love with it. Um, and very, just in light of all that's been going on, it just was a the themes of the book have been suffering, sovereignty, and so forth, which I'm sure we're going to talk about um, some of that today. And so, but that's basically. If you if you were going to do a survey of the book and you're going to do like give background before you start reading it, yeah. it you know you re- recognize that it's old. Mm. Um, in fact, that's not a bad thing. That that is a good thing. Oh no, it's, it's crazy that you yeah. can read something that's you know five thousand years old. Yes, <laughs> and so um, the author is unknown. So um, if you try to put Job as the writer, then um, then it seems you like Job into, would be tooting his own yeah, horn. Yeah, running so, the problems. Yeah, and so it's. Um, poetry and it is a book of wisdom which yeah. means that you will grow in wisdom if you apply the truths found in the book of job yeah and it's it's a it's wisdom literature not just in its content but like it's it's deemed that in a genre right it's like right. along with um what are the other proverbs and, and psalms and psalms uh so that's pretty interesting uh 
reading something that we have copies, ancient, unbelievably ancient, by the way, Mm -hmm. um, unbelievably ancient copies of this book, and it's been circulated for, I mean, if we read anything that old, it would automatically have value. You know, if you you found a, you know, a a store manager's journal that's 5,000 years old, you'd want to read it. But this is a insanely gorgeous poem that is so ancient, um, which is really interesting. So, yeah, you already alluded to uh, the themes that we're going to kind of give you all uh, a survey of what's discussed in the book. And we it's interesting because um, we, we talked about this some, how Job has really been um, robbed of a lot of its thematic content. Right. Um, there's so much in Job that is not mentioned. Like the Sunday school version of Job is, okay, it's the story of a man who loved God and, and was a really good man, and God did bad things to him or allowed bad things from Satan. Yep. Okay, Satan did bad That's things right. to him. Satan That's right. Did bad Satan did bad things to him. God allowed it, and and he he stayed the course and was a really good man, and then at the end, God gave it all back to him even more. And it's like the theme was now if you just if you just suffer through whatever God gives you as if you know God you know the devil's doing it to you but God allowed it it's because he's going to give you even more at the end you know he's going to bring you out even better and really the themes are a lot different than that um, there is the theme of suffering um, but share with us those other few themes that we wrote down um, that, yeah that the book really so tackles. obviously after. Um, the ver- verse 12 of chapter 1, you see suffering for a chapter and a half mm-hmm. of losing possessions, losing physical health, losing family, um, and just total um, the feeling of abandonment. Mm. And so then the emotional toll comes on for from 3 to 31, you know, the emotional toll. So suffering, no doubt, is a... is you know, it's it's the literature that even secular philosophers yeah. at reference things in Job, and so suffering obviously is obviously the overarching thing. Yes, the overarching the thing one. for Christianity, sovereignty, yeah, is yeah. Um, is is in play because there's one thing. This is so interesting, and, and we even uh, I believe we brought it up Sunday, and we definitely shine more light on, on this coming Sunday, Lord willing is that of all the characters, and when I say characters because the book is set up like a play. Yeah. Okay, so there's different, scenes, different scenes different and scenes acts. and acts and so forth which have characters um, in those plays. No one ever debates God's sovereignty. Not even Satan. Yeah. Because he, he asked for permission. Because he had to ask, he had to ask yeah. for permission for all of that. Job's wife did not deny it. Job's friends did not deny it. Job didn't deny it. Um, you know, Eliphaz, I mean, Bildad so far, and we go we go all through there. There's never a denial of God's sovereignty, which means that God's sovereignty is over suffering. Yeah. And uh, God So the is theme control. is suffering, but it's it's another major perhaps, <clears throat> perhaps overlooked theme would be God's sovereignty over suffering. Right. So the book really fleshes out that even from the beginning, the the evildoer had to get the authority to do the things he did. That's right. So we miss that, like pegging it. Well, Satan, you know, he just did all those bad things to Job, and God allowed it. Well, yeah, but God also, he had to ask permission to do it. You know, God handed some of his authority over and said, look, you know, here you go. You know, you, you, you're allowed to do these things. You just don't touch his body. Yeah, and that's hard for... Um for believers to even look at chapter one, and this was pointed out in the message, is that um, pointed out in the fact that the things done in chapter one, Satan's not attributed to any of those. God, it's the fire of God came down. Yeah. And the only affliction that we see that is attributed to Satan in the book of Job is the source and the physical ailments that take place in chapter two. Yeah. And wow. um, and so that is something. So we we so suffering. We there's a truth there that we have. To, sometimes God brings on suffering yeah. directly. Um, not and just all an suffering is all suffering, all suffering is Indirectly. in a way 
ordained by God. Yes, it's ordained. So now that now that's hard to fathom. Yes. You know, so like uh, the things we suffer in life are being ha- have been ordained in some fashion by God. Absolutely. And it is a um, yeah, it's a very strong truth that is hard to swallow, particularly for younger believers. I believe. Yeah. And honestly, if we're honest, even some older believers who maybe have been um, in more traditional settings of blaming the world, blaming Satan for all the suffering, sin for all the suffering, yeah. and so forth. And um, and so that's a – anyway. And we, and we wrote down the, the nature of, of evil and its meaning in the life of a believer because obviously if God is also ordaining something – even if Satan or a, a force of evil is propagating it in your life, um, there's still an element that in the believer's life, because it's ordained by God, is under his control and under his wisdom. And so we, one of the themes that you brought up that um, that we discussed at length together was the theme of God's love for Job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we don't really think of God's love for Job being in the book. Um, But you mentioned how the fact that God, you know, suggested Job to Satan. Yeah. And said, you know, have you you considered Job? Yeah. Um, The big diamond in the jewelry store. Yes. You know. He's like, come look at this. Yeah, that's what you mentioned in the sermon. Come, if you're, if you're, if you're looking for, you know, jewels to steal, come look at this jewel. This, I mean, this, this guy's name is Job. He's my servant. And it's really awesome that it reflects that God did love Job. Although these terrible things happened, God loved Job through that. And um, and and you're, I think I'll give a little snippet here for you guys listening, but we're going to talk more about that uh, upcoming this Sunday. Um, Blake's giving me permission to to discuss that a little bit, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, how God's love is seen for Job through his suffering and throughout the book. And I'm not going to give you the the punchline just yet, uh, but that is coming. So make sure you guys tune in uh, this Sunday on our Facebook page and, and listen to uh, Pastor Blake's second sermon on the Book of Job. Uh, but we got about uh, seven eight minutes here. Uh, we're trying to keep these short so you guys uh, can take advantage of, of them and, and they'd be more conveniently uh, in length. Last week we were a little long winded. <laughs> we we could talk all day. Uh, that's our job, but. Uh, real quick, as we um, as we wrap this up, uh, where is the gospel in the book of Job? Um, in, in a short way, I, that is what we're going to talk about this Sunday at, at length. But give us your your version of a little forecast of where we find the gospel in in Job. Well, we, as we said, the book of Job is is a is an older book, and and so there's some uncertainties about it. But we do find some jewels inside of it for the gospel's sake first of all we find out what god's plan and god's will is a holy and righteous god you know we go through it a holy righteous god who is perfect in justice love and mercy um he has a will for mankind his will for mankind is that is for them to love him to give him glory uh with all joy to enjoy him yeah in that because there's no greater joy in than than loving god loving god Uh, with all your heart, soul, and mind. And we see later, as Jesus said in Matthew 22, love your neighbor as yourself. That's just truth that you see throughout the book of Job. Um, as it was stated, that, but the problem presents itself because we see Job who was like no one else. Yeah. He's still a sinner. Still a sinner. That, and that's where the, the Sunday school version falls off. Yeah. They leave, out, they leave out the middle where Job isn't perfect. You know, Job asked some pretty rough questions, and and I and not to um, call anyone out. I mean, I'm thankful for my upbringing, for people who were passionate about trying to teach me the Bible. But I never really heard that. Yeah, me either. I until that. probably a year or two ago. I mean, even me. I mean, I've. I'll say this: I preached my senior sermon on Job in college, and I never got out of chapter one with yeah. it. And and um man, and that's the beginning of scene one. Yeah, and that's the <laughs> beginning. That's the introduction or the prologue. And um, and It'd be like watching a play and only watching the intro. Yeah, yeah. And and so, um, Job's a sinner. So as good as Job was, there was none like him. He was the big diamond. This made me think about Matt. 
the um, Jonathan Edwards. Yeah. His resolution about being the man that, that there's going to be someone on the earth that is that is most committed to God. Yeah. And gives God most glory and so forth. And he resolved that he wanted to be that man. Yeah. He said, somebody's got to be that person. I want to be that yeah. person. And it wasn't prideful. It, wasn't it was prideful just thing. that his goal in life was to be as close and devout to God as he could. That's right. And Job achieved that. Yeah. Okay, Job achieved that. That's pretty crazy. To think and about. yet, Job was still a sinner, and it wasn't good enough. Yeah, and and we could go into the we're gonna we'll stay with the, about loving God, and Job he fell short. Um, but our comfort in this because of the gospel is is that um, we all fall short. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think, and I, I you know I've I've said it time and time again. I don't trust my best fifteen minutes to yeah. get me into heaven. And I'm trying to think, really, without any ulterior motive, without any any thought of gain from me, have I ever really loved God with all my heart, soul, and mind, all of it, with all my being, supremely, nothing, you know, and... Um, and I, I think some of us say, well, of course, I've been through, I've been through, you know, good times. I'm not talking about having good times, but I'm talking about loving God without the presence of sin. And I haven't. Yeah. And, um, but so, Jesus has. So, yeah, that's, so that's Jesus the gospel. Points us, yeah. Jesus is, what'd you call it when we were Jesus discussing? Jesus is the righteous Job. Yeah. Jesus is the righteous Job. Um, I think that's, that's he, he lived and suffered with complete integrity. And at the same time, he called us friend. Yeah. What an awesome thought. And the correlation between all of that, Job suffered and felt as if he was abandoned, abandoned Jesus was truly forsaken, was yes. truly abandoned. And now Colossians tells us that those who are believers in Christ, God looks at Christ's record, and it's now our record. Wow, yeah. And to everyone listening, I just encourage you this Sunday, we're going to flesh that out more, uh, so be sure to, to, to tune in. Uh, now as we wrap up the kind of the end of the show, uh, we wanted to... <clears throat> discuss how um job is is what it has to say to a a modern secular world so we kind of started discussing about the raw age of job the the book itself uh copies we have it's an old book so this is a on a strictly secular level um if you don't believe in god at all if you're just interested in science and history um this is a scientific scientific historical document um, that science has preserved for us and, and, and aged for us and given us the date on and that we can observe. And it gives us insight into some of the oldest humans and their insights into life yeah. and their thoughts on philosophy, you know. And so it, even from a secular perspective in a modern world, it has such huge value. And then from a believer's perspective, obviously much more so. Um, but Blake asked me before we started the show to kind of share, <clears throat> you know, my backstory with with um, with atheism um, and, and a lot of struggles with doubt and stuff like that in my life. Um, but I, 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 growing up in the church, um, missed Job. Hmm. That's the best way I can say it. Like Job's one of the most popular stories, but I miss Job. Like, they told us the beginning and the end and left out the middle. So I was kind of led into the lie when I began to suffer in my life. Um, you know, different things happened that caused me to doubt my faith. <clears throat> I was kind of under the impression that the Bible didn't have much to say about mm -hmm. suffering, mm -hmm. which is kind of, if you're a biblical scholar or a thinker or a person who's ever even read the Bible, is is almost literally ridiculous. I mean, the Bible is filled with suffering. It's almost a book on suffering mm -hmm. in some ways, which is, you know, which is why modern movements that downplay suffering, like the prosperity gospel and, and whatnot, is just so absurd. But um, my relationship to the book of Job was a nominal one. But when I discovered the book of Job, that wait a second, this is an ancient text that is on suffering. It's about humans not understanding why something ha has happened to them, right. which was right where I was at. You know, my one of my best friends 
died of cancer in a short amount of time right in front of me, uh, literally, and, and all of us. And, um, and other things have been going on in my life. And when you're faced with terrible loss or loss of a job or d- probably some of the stuff that some people are dealing with right now, um, it's very tempting to immediately despair and blame God or, or run from God. But what Job in the book of Job is about is that. It's about that topic. Mm-hmm. Like, and, it's, and it's ancient. So what that tells us is, as a believer, God's been thinking and writing about this for eons. Um, <clears throat> but as a, even as a person, as a human being, humans all these years ago, thousands of years ago, discovered um, some amazing basic truths. And really any, excuse me, uh, really any powerful work of literature, any piece of music like William, or any poetry like Shakespeare, mm-hmm. what makes all literature powerful and, and, and timeless is when it teaches us a universal truth. The reason Shakespeare is read is because Shakespeare says things about human beings that all human beings experience, love, mm-hmm. suffering, pain. Mm-hmm. And those are called universal truths that if you live in the jungles of, of, of you know, Africa to the, to the Himalayas all the way over to, you know, the, the Americas, everyone on earth that's human experiences and wrestles with these universal truths. And what I discovered about Job was this. Job's universal truth is that human beings do not have direct control over the cosmos. That's right. We, we just, we don't control what happens to us. It, no matter what we have, all of our wealth, which we're living in a time now where people might actually listen to this more than ever. Sure. Absolutely. Because three weeks ago, this would not probably not be very believable. No, we live in America. You know, endless wealth, endless, I mean, power, military might. Well, now in three weeks, the entire globe the most the wealthiest economies in the world have been brought to brought to a screeching halt the whole world has stopped and it's kind of made us realize that even in our modernity with all of the things we have we still are not in control of this universe so true man if so you're true. a believer or if you're an atheist nobody is in control of the milky way hmm. we could blow up tomorrow we could have a famine tomorrow. We're, at the end of the day, we all have to stand, as humans in general, have to stand and look out at the stars not knowing what will happen and having ultimately no control. If we can't even stop a little virus, mm-hmm. you know, things we've been living with for thousands of years. And so when you see that in light of a believer, um, where Job comes at the end of the book is coming to grips with that and collapsing beneath that and just bowing to that and seeing God for who he is, this this, this all-inspiring, blazing fire that is in no way necessarily safe, but he is good mm-hmm. and he is in control. And Job, you know, looks at him after he just appears in the whirlwind and shows him all these things. And what are the closing lines? I encourage you all to read them. Job looks at God and says, I have heard of you with my ears, but now I see you with my eyes. And uh, that was just a huge turning point for me to actually see God through suffering. I see his power and his sovereignty and um, and just have to submit to that. Amen. Amen. Take away from last week's sermon is that even in the midst of our suffering it is it is again an opportunity for us to see that we are sinners and that we struggle with loving God supremely yeah and but Jesus saves us in spite of that and he loves us through that and this week we're going to see the flip of that in God's love for us through the suffering yeah it's awesome so we encourage you uh, to mark your mark your calendars um, and be connected to our Facebook page. Be ready to watch the sermon this Sunday. We are going to worship together best we can uh, in in a live stream format. So we're looking forward to that. 
uh, to all of our church people out there, uh, our attenders and members. We love you. Um, sh- be sure to share this video if you would like. Uh, it'll be on YouTube. Share it with uh, others that might need encouragement. Um, and again, stay connected to all of our different uh, outlets um, for communication uh, for all the different things that will be coming up in the near future. We want you to know we love you uh, from our pa- from both of your pastors um, to you all. Uh, we miss you terribly, and we are looking forward uh, to being able to gather in person soon. Uh, so for the time being, we say we love you, and God bless.